Both silver and gold have surged higher to start the week, and we wanted to quickly focus in further on some of the store value fundamental drivers for silver upcoming. As the silver spot price is passing of over 21 per ounce, which was only last touched in the beginning of the year 2014, which occurred over six years ago. The gold-silver ratio is now back down near pre vial crisis levels, and while the spot gold price has added about 200 per troy ounce since the infinite QE over 7 trillion in Fiat Federal Reserve note bailout response, silver has only added a couple bucks after returning from that historic crash briefly when silver shot below 12 spot in mid-March 2020. Here we'll do a brief review of some of the major silver related headlines early on this week and so strap yourselves in silver bulls out there here we go hello this is james anderson of sd bullion smash that like button below if you're ready to begin seeing silver's response to debauching our fiscal financial and monetary system now for five decades running if you or someone else you know wants to get a better idea of the longer term fiat us dollar price forecast perspective for both silver and gold I'll leave a couple links below in the comment section so you can share this and those videos with anyone who has yet to get a prudent precious metals position for this unfolding decade and beyond. Silver Bull and mining investor extraordinaire Eric Sprott's PSLV filed to buy an additional $1.5 billion in silver bullion for their silver fund over the next 25 months of time. At current spot prices, that works out to be around 70 million ounces of silver or just under about 5% of world newly mined silver every year for the next two, going into their fund alone. So as we've shown you for months now on this channel, the recent and historic silver bullion inflows into the largest silver ETFs appears unlikely to slow down anytime soon. Now turning to one of the key missing ingredients for a raging silver bullion bull 2020s, I want to remind viewers and you out there that all of this is happening with Silver Gorilla Indian imports essentially having been offline all of 2020. On average in the 2010s, India took in 172.7 million ounces of silver per year. And just for viewers out there, that's roughly 21% of new line silver that gets mined every year. In 2020, less than 25 million ounces, given wedding season lockdowns ongoing over there, have gone to India. Um... And then I politely suggest that Indians get long. And let's move on to the next headline, India related. This one was from today. These are the kind of Indian headlines that will wake that sleeping silver bullion import gorilla from its no wedding season COVID slumber. Uh, the headline reads, silver is emerging as the new gold as price rallies 4.8% in a day. The rally set since March in has delivered a 39% return to investors. Uh, against 14.3% for gold. And this uh, report is out of Mumbai. It states that silver has been a high beta commodity with an average beta of 1.4%. So essentially it's telling readers uh, in India that if you're bullish on gold, you might want to get even more bullish on silver because it's outperforming in recent time. The U.S. dollar index, or the DXY, is merely a measure of the dominant reserve currency versus other less dominant reserve fiat currencies like the fiat euro or the fiat yen currency. So when you hear trader talk saying dollar strength, it's essentially fiat versus fiats. This chart technically broke to the downside today, so precious metals prices might have even more upside coming as the DXY appears to be headed downwards for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, a large downturn in the Fiat Federal Reserve notes relative purchasing power is bearing down upon us all. Expect a revisiting of the early 2008 and 2011 lows on this FRED chart later this decade as precious metals begin a cumulative mania phase. As the gold price climbs its cup wall of worry formation, we look at the example palladium made after climbing out of its old just over 1000 value long term cup formation below. We then look at both silver and platinum as having some serious cup formations to make up in the coming years, as all four of these precious metals should likely be making new nominal price highs within months of one another as they did in early 1980, as the financial powers that be eventually burn away promises they never intended to be kept in real terms. That's all for this early week's market price update. We'll see you here later to close this week's Precious Metals Markets Update. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion-related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content. 
Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you think and which topics you want to hear more about.